everybody, and welcome back to the show. The Atheist Experience is live January the 12th, 2003. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Martin Wagner, Ashley Perry, and my co-host as usual. Good and today you. our guest on the air is Emery Wang, who has been uh, sort, of, sort of off and on, been touching base with the uh, ACA for the last few years, and is the host of the website LosingMyReligion.com, which he's going to talk about today. Uh, so I'm very happy to have you on the show. It's good Thanks. to see you again. Nice to be here. It's, it's been a couple of years at least. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been. Good to it has be been. So good. Good to have you. Um, yeah, well, thanks for uh, while tuning in on this uh, rainy, grungy, nasty, cold day. I mean, nothing better to do than sit around the house and watch Atheists on TV. <laughs> I tell you. It doesn't get better than that. No, it doesn't. All right. <laughs> the show is sponsored by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We have weekly meetings every Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels, located downtown 307 West... Where'd I go? <laughs> 307 West 5th Street, <laughs> between Guadalupe and Lavaca. <laughs> that was a, there I am. Uh, except for the first Sunday of each month, when we supposedly still have a lecture series. Do we still have that? Have they figured out a new location uh, for the yes lecture? Yes, we are. We're having it at the History Center okay. in the Mayor Room. History Center. Where is? Yes, uh, I think that's it's it's by the the library. I think it's on Guadalupe and Ninth. I want to say. Okay, in the mayor room. Yes, as in mayor of the city. Yes. Say. Okay, and that's at noon. Noon. Okay. Well, and then that'll be Arlo. Okay. Well, then that's going to be uh, February the second. Then will be our next lecture. And it's uh, what he said, History Center, uh, located <laughs> somewhere downtown, uh, supposedly near the downtown public on Ninth and Guadalupe. We're thinking. I uh, so. Noon. Uh, information and directions, I guess we'll have a Russell throw that up on the website um, and uh, take care of that. So, all right. Well, we have a new lecture place. Well, any food? I take it no? Uh, no. I mean, we, we bounced around ideas perhaps of bringing something there. Yeah. Um, but they got some rules. You have to have, like, tablecloths. You can't get anything dirty. Uh-oh. So well, okay. that, that kind of ruins it. But Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, you know, we'll work out to how, to how to eat and yeah. lecture at the same time. No, it was actually talk about actually meeting before. Eating first and then... And then, well, actually having an eat place before, yeah. go to that and have an eat place after, so everybody can do yeah. whatever they need. Oh, that'd be perfect. So, all right. We don't know. We'll find that closer to the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's all kind of off the cuff with us. It, it, well. So. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, good day. And we will have um, you know, Arlo back on the show, too, before uh, that uh, before that takes place. Okay. So, uh, all right. Uh, university Atheists and Agnostics. A new UT uh, student organization, well, they're not new anymore. They had to just had their first very successful semester and starting up their second semester. This coming Friday is the first meeting, 4 o'clock p.m. at Rainy Hall, room 3.102A. Uh, for If you're a registered UT student or faculty member, this is a, a great, uh, thriving new organization for you to be part of. UAA at mail.utexas.edu is the email address uh, to talk to Charles and get more information about the group. And the nonprofits are our weekly internet radio show, uh, which has been playing very successfully on uh, the atheistnetwork.com website, is on temporary hiatus. Um, hopefully, very temporary. So they've done like 50 shows, and I think yep. I want to take a breather. So yep, exactly 50. Yeah. So um, hopefully, they'll uh, you know be back on for too long. But uh, nonprofits, past episodes of the nonprofits are available on our website at uh, atheist-community.org, and that is also where to go. To find out just more about us in general, uh, what a, what an organization we, what kind of organization we are, and what kind of wacky people are part of it. So, uh, uh, thank you again, and uh, I believe that takes care of it for opening announcements. I didn't even mention. Did I mention gamers and happy hour? I sure didn't. No. Gamers at Russell and Virginia Glasser's house Monday nights at seven o'clock and happy hour at Antonio's Tex Mex near the intersection of I thirty five and one eighty three on Thursday evenings. That's about seven thirty. People trickle in all night long, though, so don't uh, worry that if you think you're missing somebody. There we go. Now I'm covered. <laughs> Got it all in. All right. Uh, so, uh, Ashley, what is happening in the world of news this week? Anything of interest? Uh, only one semi-serious story, and the rest of it is kind of wackiness. Um, first one, Iowa. Mm -hmm. uh, Rapid... Cedar Rapids in Iowa. Okay. Uh, they have an 82-year-old law there that mm -hmm. bans fortune-telling in the city. Hmm. Huh. Uh, apparently, um, somebody, a religious leader, is trying to get that repealed because it's part of their religion mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, do fortune telling and stuff like that. Hmm. And so they are trying to have this law repealed now. Um, the city, uh, the council voted Wednesday to remove it from the city books. They do need two more to make it official, but they say it's 
pretty much a done deal. Yeah, is it the um, First Amendment? Yes, argument. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They they had said that they were thinking about canceling. Well, it was brought before them to have this canceled, and they figured they would go ahead and repeal the law mm-hmm. because they would probably lose on a First Amendment. Yeah. If he brought it up on First Amendment, you right. know, freedom of religion, they would lose that. Well, there's no law and that so, says you can't be a lying con artist, but you know, <laughs> it's from a strictly f- for First Amendment standpoint. But uh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so. You know, it's interesting. England has, uh, and some of your big, some of your big countries, but England, I think, has a law against things like fortune telling tellers, faith healers. It's all based on really? give, giving false hope. Wow. Is, is the legal is the legal standard and giving people false hope. And um, it's interesting, uh, you know, that you're saying you can't do that because if you're, you know, lying to people and yeah. you know giving them false hope, that's a bad thing, you know. And, and, and morally, I, it probably is, but you know, again, well, uh, you know, if you want to accept that, you know, people do have the right to to free speech, then that includes the right to be delusional or yeah. even lie, I guess. <laughs> if, anyway, yeah. so very interesting you mentioned England though. Yeah, because because what a segue. Exactly. <laughs> it's almost like you knew what I was doing. Uh-huh. Um, Sherry Blair, mm-hmm. uh, wife of Tony Blair, the prime mm-hmm. minister in England, mm-hmm. is. Um, oh, yeah. they have a little scandal kind of going on with her, mm-hmm. but it leads into other things. The scandal is simply that she has a uh, what is it lifestyle advisor. Now, what's really been hitting the news apparently is her lifestyle advisors boyfriend Mm -hmm. she is getting into deals with him and buying property now he is fighting extradition to australia okay um so he has basically you know got some crimes they're trying to deport him back to australia and he's fighting this um so that's kind of you know her ties with him is you know it's kind of like "Hmm, what's going on there Mm -hmm. um but but the odd thing that concerns us is uh she is into some really kind of wacky stuff. Yeah, all kinds um, of wacky stuff, right? Yes. Um, she is into all kinds of new age mm-hmm. and, uh, like I say, lifestyle changing things. Um, let me see. Uh, among other things. Didn't she, she have like a feng shui person come in and redo 10 Downing Street? I haven't heard of that one. Okay. That's I'm not in here. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, but among other things. Uh, she is said to wear inflatable Floatron trousers to combat leg bloat. She has been photographed. <laughs> inflatable trousers? I don't know what's up with that. Uh, she has yeah. been photographed wearing stress fighting acupressure earrings and a bioelectric shield pendant to ward off harmful rays from everyday appliances like uh, personal computers and such. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, she has also reportedly consulted with a psychic, uh-huh. and according to British news accounts, once took part in a rebirthing ceremony in Mexico, in which she and the Prime Minister <laughs> shouted and smeared mud and ripe fruit pulp on each other. <laughs> no pictures, unfortunately. Wow. <laughs> no, fortunately, no pictures. <laughs> okay. Uh and she is actually a working mother. I think she has. I think she has four kids. Uh huh. Um, and she's a full time lawyer. Right. So she's got you know the stress of life. Uh, but yeah. Um, all working so, mothers. I mean, what's what's a person? What's a what's a lady to do? But you know, just rub raw fruit all over yourself, <laughs> and you just can't take it anymore. <laughs> and and I love the quote that's made here. Uh. All working mothers are a few nappies short of a pack of Pampers. <laughs> If a crystal inner thigh tantric seaweed waxing and thigh massage are going to stop you from stowing your baby <laughs> under the sink by mistake, who cares? And if, you're, if you're so bad off that you're going to stow your baby under the sink under in the first the place, well, rubbing, what did she say? Rub your th- rubbing her thighs with tantric wax is not going to help you. Yeah, I mean, you're already... Wow. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, wow. A few nappies short of a pack of Pampers. Well, I, That's a new one for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. That's one for the books. Well, I, well, I bet you know it's just uh, stand-up comics over there just getting all kind of mileage out of her. I'm sure they are. Yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> well, this I I had heard that she was into some you know uh, wack, just wacky um, yeah just a new age spiritualist new agey type beliefs, but I didn't realize that it had gotten to that extent. <laughs> and it's funny, she seems to kind of acknowledge that it's kooky, but she doesn't care, right? It's just sort of like yeah, yeah. I'm kooky because I can't handle all this, so. 
You know, yeah. give me a break. I, I rub mud on myself and my husband. <laughs> mm. If you're so. competent in your job and that's what you want to do with your home life. There's, there's a lot of people over okay. there who love to throw mud at Tony Blair, but, uh, <laughs> you know, so. <clears throat> ah. Okay. Well, they'll always be in England. More wackiness. Oh, good. <laughs> this one, um, I believe this is an article or something from, uh, I can't remember the exact name of the magazine. It, 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 it was on the site, but I don't have that with me. I think it was. High Times? High Times, yeah. Okay. One of these pot smoking magazines. <laughs> um, authors Chris Bennett and Neil McQueen have uh, created an exhaustive study of both the Old and New Testament in their book, Sex, Drugs, Violence, and the Bible. And uh, starting with the Old Testament tale of the Garden of Eden, Eden, asserting that the tree of life was cannabis stava. Uh, the authors move merrily along, documenting various respected religious figures who partake in the smoke of cannabis-laden incense and other psychedelic substances, and who fornicate and commit slaughter before, during, and after communing with their god. Okay. Uh, the so they're saying that Adam and Eve shared a blunt is basically the whole... Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Basically. Wow. Um, Whoa. I <laughs> started seeing talking snakes. Yeah. <laughs> it all fits. It comes together in the end. <laughs> the authors then dissect the New Testament, giving evidence that not only Jesus may have been married and or gay, but to attain his messiahhood, he was anointed by John the Baptist with an oil that contained large amounts of cannabis. Man. Most alarmingly to the devout, Jesus and his disciples may have pulled off an elaborate hoax, util utilizing drugs to feign death in the crucifixion and resurrection incident. Hmm. So, in related news, <laughs> the 700 Club launched a scud missile strike against the High Times editorial offices. Well, that's, this is certainly going to be, I'd love to hear. I, I would love to see what kind of evidence they have to back any oh, of this Oh, yeah, up. I know. It's just sort of, again. <laughs> you know. Now, see, now that is weird now, trying to use the Bible and Christianity to... Uh, uh, to promote your drug use. To, to validate, uh, so. you know, being a, a, a pro-marijuana. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's just, you know, like, everybody's latching on religion as the, the uh, you know the, uh, the, yeah. the 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 thing that's you know the thing du jour of of uh, you know look at you know I'm really a good you know, person. Is what we do is yeah. validated by the bite. You know, it's I like how much they're smoking too. When they're <laughs> <having this stuff>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I like what they have to say. The highway to hell is indeed paved. The rediscovery of the entheogens, plant hallucinogens, may offer us a mean to reacquaint to reacquaintance with the natural order and a way to return back to the garden. For if there is one thing that can break through the pavement encasing our earthly paradise, it's a weed. Well, it, that's <laughs> certainly true. Yeah, you pump your brain full of bizarre, mind-altering chemicals. Yeah, you're going to get weird you're, stuff going you're on. You're going to break through the boundaries <laughs> of... <laughs> just, <laughs> Any form of you, you, think, you definitely think you are. <laughs> yeah, wow. So that is, that's funny stuff. Yeah, so... Why the New Year? The Bible is, is even worse than we thought. Not only is there <laughs> sex and murder, but now there's tons and tons of drug use, too. Or maybe it's getting better than we thought. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. So. Hmm. And finally, mm. there is a country out there. There's a lot of them. Uh, yes, there are. So, this is the don't... smallest of them. Uh, it's only a uh, half a kilometer square. Um, Luxembourg? It's, it's really small. Uh, and its crime rate is the highest Lichten I, in the world. Liechtenstein? No. Uh, Rhode Island? No. Uh, That's a state. Eritrea? This is an entire freaking country. Wow. And the crime okay, rate, I, I want to say, is uh, criminal offenses, crime rate of 133%. <laughs> Civil offenses <laughs> at a rate of 87.2%. So there's more crime than actually actual people there? Yeah, people are doing it more than once. Okay. <laughs> now, what country would this be, you ask? Uh, tell us, Ashley, tell the us. The Vatican. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. The homeland of the Catholic faith. Mm. Is apparently a seething cauldron of crime. <laughs> now, is this because people over there are doing so many crimes, or they just have a lot of laws? You put your Every sock, you put you your left sock crime, on before yeah. your right shoe. <laughs> yeah. <taking> illegal. <laughs> yeah, ten years, buddy. <laughs> so now here's the thing: since they're they're this teeny tiny country, yeah. Okay, uh, and they have this huge crime rate. How do they, I mean, do they have a prison system? No, they do not. Okay, they so send then... people to Italy. Oh, well, I'm sure... <laughs> Rome loves that. Thank you. <laughs> they go to Italian prisons, and then the Vatican repays the Italian government to keep uh -huh. their prisoners for them. Oh, great. Okay. Um, 
So I was about but, to say, it's sort of like, well... Yeah, and know, this what? was actually for 2002, so this is oh. you know, for last year's stuff. Hmm. Um, the criminal offenses per capita were more than 20 times higher than in neighboring Italy. Hmm. Uh, Vatican museums provide an earthly paradise for pickpockets, the report said. Mm. Other crimes include embezzlement, fraud, and insulting the police and civil servants. Huh. Um, <laughs> although, the last time a serious crime was committed in the Vatican was in 1998, when a disgruntled Swiss guard shot dead his commander and his commander's wife before killing himself. Yeah. So apparently it's a lot of small small stuff, but well, nothing thought, really yeah. major. Well, I assume they have like, like 30 million people packed into the, you know, exactly. the, the square <laughs> there. And it's, it's although, although their there's... population is just over 500. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but what I'm assuming here is they have a very high crime rate, mm-hmm. but I would say that the actual people there are not on average well, it could be the criminals. The, well, you have huge well, amounts of tourists yeah. coming in. Yeah. And so I'd assume it's not the 500 people who, you know, are considered residents of the Vatican who are actually committing these crimes, mostly. Well, the 500 it's, people who are residents of the Vatican are all in the Vatican, right? I mean, they're exactly. in the church, and the, the, the and their crimes aren't getting reported, <laughs> probably in all likelihood. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's all going against victims, mostly tourists and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, um, like I said, it's mostly pickpocketing and small things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just, yeah, it's, I like it's that. The petty, it's the petty crime capital of the world, then. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. So. Wow. Very interesting. Oh, just more stuff to, uh, you know, so. uh, just another black eye that, the, you know, if it weren't bad enough that they have all these scandals over here, and then sort of like, <laughs> and if it weren't bad yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, and actually, uh, nobody ever gets caught. Over 90% of... Well, wait a minute. Then how do they know over that it's... Over 90% a- of complaints are never prosecuted. Okay, so then... The, this 133 percentile figure is simply based upon complaints. I that may very well be the case. Yeah, and I'm wondering. Yeah, how, I'm wondering how they're driving the 133 percentile from. If well, probably the number of complaints, the yeah. number of people that actually live there, 500. Okay. Um, and it's in that kind of math. But again, it oh, all right. It's, it's not actual convictions. I would assume. Okay. It's that's how many complaints are made. Hmm. So, and I wonder how much of that is just you know tourists losing their stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it's only a complaint. Yeah. Always a possibility. Yeah. Well, so. I mean, tourists do do that. They do lose stuff. And oh, they yeah. get pickpocketed and just yeah happens all the time. They're just not careful, right? I mean, just any idiot walking around, you know. And also camera, when you're, when you're camera tra- bag, exactly. camera when, when you're traveling, there's a lot you know, of uh, you know big fat bulging back on, pocket so. wallet. You know, I mean, you're just you yeah. might as well be wearing a t-shirt that says, "Hi, I'm foreign. Beat me up and take my money." You know. So. Oh well. So. So you have huh. the Vatican, most dangerous place on earth. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And that's it for news. That's it. Well, thank you, Ashley. That's a sort of, yeah, you're right. A lighthearted and kind of somewhat amusing week, you know. Oh, well. Yep. The difference, Dave. Uh, this is a live show to call us in and ask us questions stuff. That number to call us live is 477-2288. And we are now going to talk to Emery. Mike, thanks for being back on the show. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and... Uh, you know, I, you know, I guess um, your whole little philosophical background, if you like, and then what motivated you to start the website and all the rest of it. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, the whole thing that started it all was, I guess, uh, I don't know, I suppose it's my parents' fault in the beginning for raising me as a uh, um, fundamentalist Christian. Um, mm. So for 22 years, uh, you know, I was a born-again Christian, uh, mostly Southern Baptist, mm-hmm. and... Uh, ah. Um, you know, it's just uh, just like any other any other Christian out there. That was the uh, that was the thing for me. And so, finally, um, when I was in college. You know, I was always somebody asked a lot of questions, and so many questions weren't answered that I would just sleep under the rug. And finally, there's just too many. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back. I, I finally said, well, hey, you know, I can't just all these things don't make sense. All these things don't add up, and I can't just ignore them anymore. So that's when I when I left the faith, and doing that was a pretty difficult thing because, you know, being raised in a Christian family, um, with, uh, all your friends are Christians, and so when you when you step out like that, you're basically by yourself. There's really no nobody to talk to about that. So, what prompted me to start this site was uh, a friend of mine uh, named Russell, um, who uh, had a similar background to me. We were working on his website, actually, and we were talking one day. We thought, well, hey, 
we should start a website about this. Mm -hmm. um, and a website that contains the kind of information that we wish uh, we would have had when we were leaving the religion. Um, so basically that's what the site is, is a site full of information that we, sh we, we wish we had access to. Um, it's a place that people can come and uh, actually write to us and, and we can talk to them, give them the benefit of our experience. So it's sort of geared toward people like that, Christians who are asking questions and Christians who are, are stepping out away from the religion like we did. But we welcome everyone and we get, uh, we get email from Christians and from, from non-Christians and, and other religions and, and all that. Yeah. So what's the format of the site? Do you just have like, is it Q&A or do they have... The, the format of the essays site... Essays or... Yes, is... Uh, is a sort of a repository of our ideas. Uh, okay. We write a lot of the articles on the site, and we also include articles uh, from other people that we found that are related to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's basically an informational site. Um, uh, you visit it, you'll see you know, our opinions on things. We, we'll, we'll tackle certain issues. Uh, the, uh, the focus of the site, uh, we, we steer away from certain things. We, we don't get into things like uh, biblical history because there's tons been written on that. We, we can't add anything to that. Um, things like uh, scientific questions, uh, evolution, creationism. Again, you know, there, there's experts that do that far better than we can. And uh, even uh, as far as making fun of, uh, you know, uh, certain Christian leaders and, and following their foibles. Um, uh, actually, my, uh, my, my partner, Russell, has a site that does mm -hmm. that. And so we don't focus on that either because those things were not central to why we left Christianity. Yeah. Um, what was the the key thing was the the, the core doctrines of Christianity itself mm -hmm. about uh, sin and uh, salvation, redemption, all those things we felt uh, were enough to show that Christianity was uh, not a rational or an ethical system. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, quite frequently on the show, that's that's a question that we often get from callers. So what made you become atheist? I mean, why did you become an atheist, and what was the process like? And um, you know, and it sounds your uh, experience sounds very typical. So it's very reminiscent of mine. Um, you know, Ashley described much the same thing. It's a long process, isn't it? You mm -hmm. begin with critical thinking, and you just ask, you just begin to wonder if these teachings that are being handed to you really deserve to be taken seriously. And it's a lengthy process, and often a very difficult one. Right. Isn't that right? Because you have to. Because what you're doing is you're going against um, essentially what is the conditioning of the very culture that we live in. Yeah, you're definitely which, swimming upstream there, if yeah. you, especially if you're raised in that and everybody around you is, is involved in this yeah. thing. And there's this equation with um, you know religious belief equals virtue, and so a lack of religious belief must equal a lack of virtue and a lack mm -hmm. of any sort of moral compass yeah, that you're living by. There must be some secret thing you always wanted to do but feel guilty <laughs> yeah. about. So you left the religion so you could go do that with a clean conscience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And All that kind of thing. What is... What, so... Uh, so generally speaking, the the essays and the articles they have, it's you're you're giving your own point of view, and so it, it's mm -hmm. a very personal thing. You're not just echoing uh, critiques of Christianity that time and time sites and mm -hmm. books throughout history. So it's yeah, we, we you know we, we do you do a one on one with the I mean with the people who write you? Definitely, we we answer uh, almost all our emails. Um, mm -hmm. The kinds that we sometimes don't answer, are what I call the drive by. The drive-by emails, where sometimes you'll you'll have uh, Christians that just throw a bunch of Bible verses at you and say, you know, and there and 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 usually you, you respond to those and you never get a response back. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes those, you know, we it depends. If it looks like they want to talk about something, we definitely respond. But if they just want to spout a bunch of stuff, sometimes we don't. But we read all our email and uh, you know we invite uh, you know everyone to write in and, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, Try to get back to you. Yeah, so talk about, you know, a, a little bit more maybe just about like some of the responses that you've gotten. So you're actually getting responses and getting input from former Christians or people who are in the transition from becoming a believer to an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. And they're doubting. And so part of the whole process of doubting has to do with, is there something wrong with me? Am, am I a bad person? Because right. that's being fed to you. And so like, how do you get those kinds of letters and how specifically do you help people sort of get over those, you know, the feelings of, like, personal, mm -hmm. you know, doubt that that's coming along with doubting the religion, you know, leading to the, the, the doubt of your own worth as an individual. Right. How, how, do you, how have you found has been an effective way to deal with those people? I mean, have you gotten those kinds of emails from yeah, people certainly. who are really torn up inside? Mm -hmm, certainly. And what have you found has been a very effective way to, to, to talk with them? Well, um, we've gotten... Uh... <laughs> 
several of those kinds of emails and and for some reason we get a lot of them from young people from teenagers from college age people and uh often these people don't have uh, uh really anybody to talk to because they're in church their their family's christian similar to, to the situation you know that uh, that i was in and and so they don't have really a, a place to talk uh, openly about these questions and so we give them uh, we lend them an ear, and we and uh, you know we don't tell them, hey, you know you're you're crazy, you're doing something wrong for saying this. We mm-hmm. we say, hey, you know this is a very legitimate question. But specifically, what you're saying about how you know how we uh, deal with people who have feelings of um, that they're doing something wrong and self self worth feelings, we basically tell them that um, you know we first of all we know how you feel. We felt the same way. I I, I know exactly how that goes, and, and I tell them that. This is just what people say. This is what people tell you. Uh, you know, you're going to go to hell if you if you don't believe this. Okay, mm-hmm. and in that regard, you know, there's a lot of different religions that are going to tell you those kinds of things. So if you want to be, if you're thinking that you're in a position where you're in danger of uh, offending God, well, <laughs> you're always in that position. Uh, somebody's always going to have an issue with the way you believe or what you believe. So it's just who you're who you're gonna take it from, who you're listening to. Mm-hmm. So you know, basically, we tell them, hey, look, you know, we're, we're not. T- when you leave Christianity, you don't become a bad person. You don't become uh, just like a Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. I, I tell them that basically, I'm the same kind of person I am. The morals that my parents taught me, that I learned in church, they're they're very similar to to what I believe now. Uh, you know, ninety you know five percent. Um, it's just that the reason you do things now is different. You do things, um, you do good things, you don't do bad things, because you realize why. And uh, it's not because uh, some religion or God told me that I should do this. But you do this because you really believe it's the right thing to do. Mm. And well, uh, you know, I've always said that there are uh, the difference between secular morality and religious morality is that secular morality is based upon practical considerations. Right. You know, they're just... Actions have consequences. Right. So if the consequences to your actions are going to be harmful, mm-hmm. then that can then that's reason enough not to do something. Mm-hmm. Whereas religious morality is simply rooted in this authoritarian, you know, follow rules handed to you. Right. And and there's this kind of you know follow the leader approach. Mm-hmm. And it just it seems to me that you can't really base a sound moral system on just this blind following of instructions. Mm-hmm. You know, because even if it were true that morals were a thing that were handed to us by a god, there would still have to be a why. There would still have to be that practical consideration, right. and concern. Um, and Ashley, did you have anything you wanted? To- uh, yeah, one thing I noticed when I was reading through the site, um, it was interesting that it, it wasn't as, I guess, atheist focused or related as I had expected it to be. Right. Um, when I went there, I was expecting it more to be, you know, there is no God, and here's, you know, a whole bunch of reasons as to why that is, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, instead, it sounded I was reading mostly through the fact, and this is where I noticed it. That it was more, not saying there isn't a God, but, you know, assuming that there is a God, this is the problem we have with, you know, him. Mm-hmm. And essentially, the Christian God, obviously. Right. Um, and I was wondering, is that partially intended for the audience? Since it's more of a transition type site, mm-hmm. it could be scary for, you know, a doubting Christian to go there and all of a sudden, you know, mm-hmm. be blasted with, you know, there's yeah, no God, you must out be atheism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You kind of want to get the water warm for him, is that yeah. it? Well, or is, is, that, is that more your belief, more of an agnostic type thing, mm-hmm. or is it, uh, again, lowering them into it slowly? Well, it's, um, it actually is our belief. Uh, after leaving uh, religion... Um, you know, I haven't really come up with um, another ism that, okay, this is it now, mm-hmm. you know. Um, basically, yeah, we don't lead people in a, a, any, any uh, we don't tell people, okay, after you li- leave your religion, now what do you believe in? Uh, you know, we, we certainly don't want people to jump from the you know, frying pan into the fire. And so mm-hmm. we basically, you know, tell people that, hey, you know, after you li- leave your, uh, your religion, if that's, that's what you feel you should do, then, then just find your, you know, your own path in life wherever that leads. Um, we, you know, we just tell them basic things like, like, uh, uh, lead a good uh, and, uh, you know, a moral life, lead a responsible life, treat other people with respect, those kinds of things, and, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, s- seek your path, do what, you know, find things that make you happy. Mm-hmm. And so that's it. And, and, and the reason we do that is because that's pretty much, at least for me, um, that's pretty much what 
what I do. Um, I don't uh, really subscribe to any particular uh, type thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, we we try to tell people on this show that it's not the purpose of our show to convert people to atheism. We're just presenting the criticisms that we have of the belief system. Right. You know, atheism isn't just another doctrine to be converted to. You mm-hmm. know, you, you don't. And, and the whole idea of it is that you can live your life free from doctrinaire. Right. You know, uh, uh, um, positions. And yeah, and that's and that's what we do. And and, and I, I guess I, I sort of, you know, don't steer people in a certain direction just because I, I feel like I'm too busy, you know, just, it's all I can do to live this life, mm-hmm. you know, to, 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 to get through the daily things to make uh, life better for me and, and the people around, you know, uh, me, my friends or my family, things like yeah. that. And, and there's so much in this life to do yeah. that, that these things of, okay, which religion should I subscribe to or belief system? It's almost like, well, just kind of live your life, and, and those kind yeah. of those things will, will fall into place. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. So, so what have you? Uh, I mean, what has been the personally, you know, the most fulfilling thing to you about having the site uh, as a as an ab- well a chance to get on my soapbox, yeah, and, yeah. World, you know, and talk about me and what I think, and right. and, and actually <laughs> like I know what I'm talking about. Wow. Oh. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's. It, it, that actually is true because, uh, like you said uh, earlier about um, how you get over it, and it's a process of, of getting out from religion. Well, mm-hmm. this is part of the process. It's very therapeutic yeah. to put all your ideas down on paper and, and, uh, or you know, on the net so that uh, people can see them, they can interact with you, then you can further refine your ideas. I mean, I've learned a lot of things. Uh, mm-hmm. Some things that I've written, I've changed or taken down based on responses from uh, Christians and other people. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're constantly sort of having a site like this, you know, it challenges you to think. And the more you think about it, the more, you know, solid and grounded you are in your mm-hmm. ideas. And uh, that, um, you know, that, that helps mm-hmm. a lot. That's good. Um, well, excellent. Uh, the site's going to continue to be very successful, I'm sure. Um, but that number to call us up live for questions, 477-2288. Want to talk to us about, uh, about any old thing? Uh, talk to us about, again, why be atheist as opposed to being non-atheist? Uh, and that's a question we get frequently, and I'm sure we'll get it some more. Um, now, I've had a similar, you know, my experience on the television show has been similar to what you're describing with the website, mm-hmm. in that it has been a thing that has, first off, you know, when I first started, I was like, Mr. but I have learned over years to just to be a little bit more. I've learned to argue. I've, bec- have, I've achieved a lot more clarity with my own points of view and things. And I've tried to learn exactly what it is that people who disagree with me, why it is they think the way they do. And uh, in, in turn, you know, why it is I don't think the way they do. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and sure, there's a lot of fun just being able to get up on your soapbox. But, but it ha- also has to do doesn't it with that becoming a little bit more grounded and a little you know having a greater understanding of what your own position is right learning how to discuss these things learning how to form your arguments and 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 debate mm-hmm. and um is there anything is there anything like a discussion board or a chat room on the side or is it uh well no we don't have a discussion board and uh the reason we did that we did, we chose not to is because we weren't sure that we could uh, keep up with that mm-hmm. on a daily basis because you pretty much you know that's a lot of work yeah yeah it's not and, your job or anything on this uh, side. Yeah. right you know we i that's the sort of a it's, it's this whole thing is like a, a sideline something i do in mm-hmm. my spare time so we decided just to have the real strong uh, email um correspondence with people that way uh, we can get on the one-on-one, and and also, you know, if, we, if we're delayed for a while, you know, people generally yeah. uh, understand. Um, if we had the time, uh, yeah, we would love to have a, a message board thing, like things like that. We do post our letters on there, though. Yeah, what a percentage of the actual letters you get do act- and actually end up being posted on the site? I mean, very just, small, maybe very... maybe five percent or something, because we get so many letters, and that you know, yeah. we, we can't post them all. We don't have time to stick them yeah. all in there. But every now and then, you know, when I get the time, I go look through yeah. the letters, and the more interesting ones, I'll put up there. So the very yeah, good. Do you adjust your articles a lot to do with letters, as in, as new arguments come in or something mm-hmm. like that? You either add that or just we add yes, adjust the article. Yeah, sometimes we adjust. I mean, some people have pointed out a few things where, uh, you know, this the article is kind of shaky and, uh, and and if it's not some area that we have expertise in 
like for example, we had some articles on the Constitution uh, about you know is were the founding fathers really really did they say these things were they as Christian as as some so, so many people yeah. think they are, and we had a lot of articles that we had grabbed from other places that proved or that were showing that they weren't, and then we had some people challenging us on on the historicity of those kind of things, and and uh, and then we finally say well look you know we're not um, American historians, yeah. mm-hmm. and so we really can't. Uh, you know, speak with expertise on this. So we took those articles down because they really aren't central to the issue. So yes, yeah. letters like that right. do affect things. And yeah, and they, they, they bring up new ideas and, and uh, we write more articles to try to uh, answer them. Mm-hmm. And it saves us time too. That way we, we you know, get yeah. the same question again. So, well, look at this article. Yeah. You have to yeah. rewrite it every time. Exactly. And it helps you, again, maintain a, a good, sharp focus on the website overall, which is just criticizing Christianity based upon its own doctrines. Its own doctrines. And not diverting right. into side issues of this politics, is right. science. Because yeah. there's so many people that are doing that and they yeah. do it so, so much better than we do. So yeah. we're just basically sticking with what we know. Yeah. And if somebody wants to know that stuff, you can just give them a link to... Right. You know. And we do have a links page. Excellent. Okay. okay. Well, good deal. So if you're, um, you know, questioning your beliefs or something, it's a, you know, first thing to realize is there's nothing wrong with it. And you might want to check out losingmyreligion.com to see if there's uh, anything, anything there that answers any of your questions. And you can call us up at 477-2288 and see if we can answer any of your questions. And we're going to start with Howard on line one and just take it from there. Howard, you're on the air. All right. Yeah. Hey, thanks for waiting. Hi, Howard. Hi. I uh, want to commend that fellow there for having his website going. And I looked, took a look at it briefly. It looks pretty good. So Thanks. Um, thanks, Howard. But anyway, so... The question I just wanted to bring up was uh, that there's a lot of coverage of religion in the newspaper all the time and in the media all the time, and it's pretty much, you know, shit. Uh, it's presented in a light where, you know, this is a perfectly legitimate uh, idea, and we need to have it in the debate. You know, the Christian element, the <laughs> religious element is all over the place. Yesterday's paper has two-thirds of, a, of two pages that just list all the stuff that's going on in churches and all this kind of stuff. And today in the newspaper, there's an article about this convention of conservative rabbis that's going to uh, evaluate whether homosexuality is uh, is uh, allowable or you know is not a sin or whatever you want to call it from a Jewish perspective, from the Jewish conservative perspective. That's on the I think I think it was on the front page of the paper. The wife of the uh, I don't know what, what his title is. You Mark Udoff, that's the, something with UT, the president or the chancellor or whatever he is over there. His, his wife is doing this thing. She brought this up. She doesn't have one position one way or the other, but there's discussion of it. So, yeah. you know, of course, everybody in the Bible thumpers are always talking about what it says in Leviticus there about homosexuality. That's an abomination. Mm-hmm. And then the other rabbis talk about what it says in the Talmud, you know, uh, which was written, you know, uh, three or four, three to five hundred years uh, um uh, you know, after the uh, after Jesus and what they said, you know, and they're they're of course a little bit more lenient about it. But what I say is, why bother? Don't look at what these old people said. It was people. It was no supernatural being. Mm-hmm. Nobody said, you know. I I would say if they said it was an abomination back in the Old Testament, which you know in Leviticus, which is all suspect anyways, but it was written by somebody who said, we don't want you. We want you to procreate. We want as many of you as possible, so we can kick everybody's ass and take their land. You know, which <laughs> is the same prerogative of everybody, not just the yeah. Hebrews or anything like that. Although we still see it happening right now. Yeah. You know, and I was raised as a Jew, Reformed Jew. Wow. Uh, I'm not. A, I don't consider myself a Jew anymore, except to the extent that there's lots of Jews that thought the way I think back in Germany in the 30s, in the early 30s, in the 20s, and they were rounded up right along with the Hasids and the. Uh, and the other, and the misnogdim, and the real religious Jews, too. So, to that degree, I guess I have to consider myself a Jew. But, I'm just saying, you know, so now you have the conservative Jews, and they're going to go and look in the Bible and decide whether or not God said this is a sin. I say, there's no God, there's no sin. You know, well, you there's, know. there's no right and wrong in the universe. We, as humans, lay a template over the world to make sense of it, and we have rules and laws that make sense, like don't kill each other, Mm-hmm. Don't steal each other's stuff. Yeah, if we could yeah. just do those two things, do those two things, and no. Ki- and, and when I say don't kill, it's not with all the caveats that the Bible has in it. Because if you read it, it's basically don't kill each other, kill the other guy. 
<laughs> you know, that's really what the, the, yeah, the Ten Commandments... Don't kill don't your kill. people, but go over there and kill so anyways, them. I've got off my, I'll get off my soapbox. That's basically all I'm saying. It's yeah. like, you know, thank you very much, rabbis. I'm sure you're all very learned and all this stuff. And I, you know, I used to teach Hebrew school. I know all yeah. this stuff. Well, you know, it's it's when, as you said, just for millennia now, religion has just been such a, so woven thoroughly into the fabric of human culture that you know you can't. It's unreal. It, it, sure, once you as an individual have divested yourself from it, it's very easy to say, "All right, look, I'm not going to use supernatural guidelines to determine you know how I live my real life. I'm going to use practical concerns." And and the very idea of appealing to some ghostly other world or invisible magic being is silly. When you've divested personally, but of course our culture, it's so woven into the fabric that you can't expect culture itself to just throw it overboard um, that quickly, even though it might seem perfectly rational to us to do so. Right, but you yeah. know, the thing is that um, people that think, don't believe in God, mm -hmm. lots of times have been killed in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what, why the idea hasn't really taken hold. Over the years, people who said, hey, wait a minute, that just doesn't make sense. Bam, you're dead, man. Yeah. You know, and they've done that systematically. That's just the way it works. Because you can get a whole lot more by saying, hey, I hear the voice of God mm -hmm. and do what I say and he'll be nice to you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and I'm saying, hey, I don't believe you hear it. Bam, you're dead. You mm -hmm. know, and that's been going on in one form or another. And now, right now, we have this little window of opportunity. Yell from the rooftop. You people are nuts, and it's coming to a head right now because of the Islamic fundamentalists, and you got the Christian fundamentalists who are just as bad. You know, maybe one wrong, less nuts. You know, at least they're not sending their children yet you know, with bombs strapped around them. Of course, that's not it's, that's not fundamentalist thing. That's a political uh, land deal. But you know, it's still it's all part and parcel of the same thing. What I'm saying is, right now is the time to say we don't that time. You don't need you don't get morality from religion. If anything, it's under morality for the most, like this thing with homosexual, which is obviously okay, or it wouldn't be here in the natural order of things, everywhere you look. So well, it just is because no something's question. natural doesn't and make it right, And whether or though. not, because of our cultural upbringing, we find it gross or disgusting yeah. or anything like that, doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it just is. Well, yeah. It's like whether we like birds or not. I feel bad because birds can fly and I can't. <laughs> well, yeah, you have to uh, well, evaluate it. You want to kill it. Yeah. Yeah, not yeah. to you know, like if you're saying it's just because it's natural. You know, some people have a natural tendency to to want to to harm other people, and, and just because it's natural doesn't mean it's okay. Yeah, right? and I, but, I don't think that's what you're saying, Howard. But uh, but you know, but it, it's true that it, it's um, you know, cultures you know, uh, cultures are people, and vice versa, and so we we do set the guidelines. Uh, more or less based upon you know our need to get along with each other and for the culture itself to thrive and survive the, these moral precepts that we live by are things that we come up with whether later on people are just, uh, want to claim want to ascribe them to some sort of supernatural entity or what have you you know the fact of the matter is that people to has have come up with the rules under which we live and but they but you know again but they are constantly going under revision too. I mean, hundreds of years ago, slavery was morally justified. Now it's it's morally indefensible. Uh, now you, I, there's a lot of transition in terms of you know the, the example you bring up with homosexuals are becoming more and more you know if not accepted. I mean, people are slowly coming around to thinking at least these people aren't horrible, evil, you know, corrupt. You know the, the worst of the worst, right? And it's just, and some people just have a different well, sexual preference, and that's the way it is. That's, that's, but but religion, no well, ratcheting happening there, and but, it can but, be undermined at any time. And it's being, you know, there's a whole <coughs> people who don't agree with what you just said. Yeah, and they have a big foothold in the government. Well, sure. And, yeah, uh, and you know they they are the they can motivate a lot of people to vote on this on these kinds of subjects. Yeah, uh, to what I think is a morally morally wrong position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to condemn another person's uh, sexual preference. Yeah, and I anyway, think uh, Howard, well, you know, you bring up a really good point. Uh, you're saying that the rabbis are debating this idea of um, homosexuality, and they're they're considering does it violate God's laws? Uh, okay, so their whole consideration is does this fall in line with our religion and what it says about what God says? But the question that they're forgetting is, you know. On homosexuality or any type of, uh, of of a question like this is what? How does it affect the people? And so the danger, you know, you run into with religion is when when the religion uh, doesn't 
is only concerned with, does this obey God's laws, and not what is the effect of it on people. And so the question is, you know, I think that they need to look at it in homosexuality as, okay, what does this actually do to people? What, how, what is its effect on people? Is it good or is it bad? And, uh, and how does it affect society? And those, those are the most important questions for people in, in any type of a, of a moral situation. And when you get away from that and you just consider, you know, you rather obey uh, God than man type thing, right. uh, then it gets really dangerous because then all of a sudden the humanistic element is, is, is away from that. Uh, the the right. considerations that, of does it harm the, people or not that's the fork goes the away. This country is at right now yeah. in terms of the fact that uh, you have the... the a uh, political p- party that's in power has used, uh, you know, Republicans seem to be made up of theocrats and oligarchs and, uh, you know, neo-fascists and the people who just want to be rich and don't want to really pay very many taxes. And then, you know, just a lot of other people who don't really like blacks very much. And then, I don't know, sorry, I'm not a Republican, but I bet I can pretty much fit that. <laughs> I don't know where we gathered that, that one. In one of those categories. <laughs> I had an inkling, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, and the uh, fact that all those other groups who have a legitimate beef in the, in the fact, oh, we want smaller government, we don't want to pay taxes, okay, I understand that. But if you're using the religious right to empower yourself, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of people who don't think that's such a good idea, but they use this other thing where, where you, you know, basically a one-issue thing. I believe in religion. I believe God should set the laws of our country. Mm-hmm. If you believe that, and you've used that, even though you don't really believe it, but you're using it because that way you can under, undermine uh, right. the tax. It's like giving a gun to a very law. angry person. Isn't this right. not a very yeah. good idea? But, you know, <laughs> so what, you're saying, what yeah. you're saying, and I noticed it on your website where you, you say that, uh, why, why does this website exist? Why don't you just leave it alone or something like that, I think you said. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's like, well, yes, there is this problem that we have right now. This question mm-hmm. is up in the air right now. Which way is yeah. this country going to go? Is it going to go towards saying, I don't believe there's a supernatural being who laid down all these laws, and that those laws should be in our, in our uh, courthouse, and that those laws should be uh, the basis of the laws that we make in our land, or I want to go through a, you know, an an empiricist, rational, logical look at the universe and do things that make sense for people, yeah. for humans. But it's it's gonna it's 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 a very difficult and long transitional process to 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 get people uh, to reject the idea of supernatural authorities over just natural authorities, and uh, simply because religion, like I said, it's su- such a long-standing meme in human right. culture exactly. uh, that it's it's going to be very difficult to overcome. Just the very idea of um, you know, of belief equals virtue and skepticism equals a lack of virtue. That's a difficult piece of programming just to get around. Um, recently, I'm on the um, Skeptic Magazine uh, newsletter mailing list, and recently he's you know asking for people to write in. Michael Shermer has been asking for people to write in in response to a theist, some theists, some Christians that he's been talking to, asking like, what are the benefits and of of disbelief as opposed to belief and and some of the criticisms that uh, sanity, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and of course you know people wrote in with all these uh, these reasons. Um, but one of the one of the criticisms that uh, that he um, posted from you know one of the uh, religious leaders that you know that he gave examples from was that um, one fellow said that there's there really isn't any example in history of like atheism or disbelief uh, being at the root of any sort of sustained cultural movement. You know, any kind of at the root of any kind of society. Whereas, of course, we have all these you know societies that have a very long religious tradition. And of course, the only example that he listed was was communism. But you know, I think that, you know communism again was just what's a rabid religion in itself. Yeah, I mean that's that's actually just replacing traditional religion with with religion of the state. Yeah, so, but, so it's not really it's, thing. yeah. It's not good, having religion doesn't mean you don't yeah. believe in anything. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah the, the, so. But the, the the point was that uh, you know one response that I had to that was that it has only been you know the reason you don't see in history too many atheist societies that have grown and thrived and built pyramids and what have you is that it's only been within the last century or century and a half that a person could come out and say I don't believe in God and not be hanged right exactly. <laughs> you know and so That's what it's I was saying. so it's a it's a very new thing and I, so I think that for the relative youth of I mean atheism's been around one ever, of the, one of the ever since religion's been David around David Hume got away with it yeah uh, 400 years ago yeah you know the things that he said and that he was talking about you know yeah. these are not old, new ideas 
Uh-huh. There's, you know, there is a there are a few things in the Bible or in the in the uh, in the Old Testament that are true in terms of sayings and aphorisms, and one of them is there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah, that's and that's great. one of them. There's always been somebody who is the skeptic in every society. The yeah. thing is, they were silenced in some way, either, either they were killed or they were subjugated in yeah. some way, and we never get to hear from them. Right. And yes. And Jesus was the same way. He was a big skeptic. He was. He was. Uh, you know, they said, well, you know, you shall not work on the Sabbath. And he's like, well, really? Are you sure? You know, what if this donkey falls in the well? Shouldn't you pull it out? You know, and 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 what happens to him? And, right. Well, that's you know, what, you know, that's what, yeah. the, that's right. what the Talmud is. It's a bunch of questions back and forth discussing what's mm-hmm. in the Bible and talking about these fine points. And what I'm saying is that after a while, this is an exercise of futility because really it is a house of cards. Yeah. You know, basically what these rabbis, and we'll get back to the point I made, and I'll get off the line and get some yeah. else. Yeah, we got to go ahead and move on to the next caller, so yeah. I'll let you make but it one basically, more. Basically, you know, these rabbis going back and looking what it says in Leviticus and deciding what it says in the Talmud. Finally, here we are in the 21st century. I would like to say you're looking at the cards down towards the bottom of the big house of cards on which is constructed mm-hmm. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And all that stuff on top of it is teetering right now because well. we don't need to be looking at for what this imaginary being told us. We need to look at what is right for us, and that goes back to what Emery, I think, was saying, is that we need to look at the effects of our decisions about On people. issues, yeah. you know, the, the diversity amongst, amongst people. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Well, you know, uh, ongoing debate is, is, is what will, uh, you know, is keep, keeps those issues alive, and um, we appreciate your input. We really do. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Bye. Speaking of getting killed for your beliefs and stuff like that, you're saying, you know, mm-hmm. generations ago you could be shot for being atheist or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a little bit off topic, but I know that there was a quote that I have. Um, it's, it's by somebody in the government who is saying this quote in support of the death penalty, saying, what, have Jesus, what if Jesus had only got 15 years with the possibility of parole? <laughs> Where would the world be today? Well, all he, he, he didn't get 15 years. That's he got, scary. He, he didn't get 15 years. He got three days. Okay? Jesus didn't Which sacrifice Jack. a whole Jack. different topic, but... Okay? <laughs> if I got to be dead for three days and, and then, then resurrected the and, and, and be ruler of the universe, I'd die for humanity's sins, too. No big deal. It's not that. Yeah, because, uh, you know, one of the big things about fear of death is you don't know what's going to happen. The, the, the yeah. fear of the uncertainty. Yeah, religion's exploited that. Yeah. They're going to be gone, and, and, and he had none of that fear. Yeah. He knew exactly what's going to happen. Well, we'll see what John has to say about it. Let's see, online too. Thanks for holding all of our callers. Hey, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, I guess my main question is, what exactly are you guys trying to like point out? Other than like, obviously, you're being offensive to like, I guess, Christians. Well, well, if we're being offensive, that's on you. I mean, you choose what offends you in this life. If you, you just don't... made fun of Jesus. Well, you know, no, actually, how did we make fun of Jesus? That, that was yeah. actually uh, somebody Jesus in the didn't government. Give up anything. Well, you know, oh, well. that's that's my assessment of this this supposed sacrifice. No, I mean, you're not the same way people. as a person would when they die, because a person yeah. doesn't have all uh, uh, knowledge of the future like Jesus is. A person all right, well, have, well, is well, all just, powerful like like this. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's just assume like you're not offending people. Like, what exactly is the goal of, I guess, the atheist community? Just like to be naysayers or to be skeptics? I mean... Well, we're skeptics by nature. The goal of the atheist community of Austin is is to provide a community for unbelievers to meet other unbelievers. The, the purpose of this show is to debate these issues and present, uh, you know, our criticisms of the belief systems and then, uh, you know, talk to other people and, uh, and uh, you know, have these discussions. So well, why, why is your education. focus on, on religion? Because we're atheists, okay, and so atheists are defined by the fact that we we disbel- we're disbelievers. And you sound so, more like like lame philosophers who are trying to sit in a coffee house having a debate. Well, I mean, what you, you're saying we, is we, like you're, you like quote like Locke and Hobbes and all these people that like have written about this hundreds of years ago, but you're sitting in front of television and mm-hmm. you say offensive things like Jesus didn't do jack. Look, so, you, know, you, I, you, you can call us offensive all you like, but, you know, we're more interested in having debates and discussions. So if you want to hit us with a point or something, that's fine. You know, if you're if you're offended by us, you know, well, right, right, you know, I mean, we, that. Look, I, we but, understand Michael, that the nature of religion is such a powerful influence upon people in our culture. We understand, that, you know, we, we, we understand this is a touchy subject. Right. We don't have any illusions about that. And people take and we know that people take their people who are religious 
take their beliefs very seriously. But, you know, at the same time, we uh, have uh, a lot of strong convictions behind our opinion that uh, religious beliefs I, but, I don't but how, really how, do people any good. But it's easy for you. It's a catch-22. It's easy for you to get around everything saying, I don't believe in anything, but hey, you know what? Uh, well, I never said I didn't believe in anything. Right, I said I don't right. believe you, in God. Yeah, you believe in the moral contract, right? You believe that society should uh, benefit each other and be good, and we should all have, like, a certain, uh, uh, you know, set of standards, like morals through community, right? Well, but I think that you, that's... What you don't address is that whenever someone says, hey, you know, uh, the Bible says this, this, and that, all you can say is, yeah, well, I don't believe in that. That's not a very strong argument. You're just a naysayer. Well, have you, have you looked at, at, at uh, my website, uh, losingmyreligion.com? Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, an outsider, uh, you know, to this group. I'm, I'm the guest here, and definitely that's not, um, that's not my position. Um, and, I, and that's not these guys' position either, um, having talked to them yeah. uh, over the years. Uh, it's not just a, a naysaying thing, but it's a matter of... Um, well, because well, I've caught the he... show before, and what I've seen is it's almost like like a group of people who believe in aliens or a group of people that believe that the government is like out to get you. So they just say little things like, yeah, the, uh, you know, the whole Roswell incident was covered up by the government and, you know, this, the, the president, you know, we, we've just, gotten those callers before. Yeah. Those, are the, the thing. People, those are the people who call in, not us. Yeah. Here's the thing. I mean, John, you're, you're talking about naysaying. Look, you know, if somebody comes to me and they tell me that they have a big invisible magic dragon in their garage, and they don't give me any evidence for that invisible magic dragon. Well, okay, and I, say, man and I say, and I say, well, I don't believe you. I guess what do main, I? What do I need to say more above and beyond that to main, justify here, my disbelief? I mean, here's my main question: How do you prove uh, it's, existence? And I mean, like you just say, hey, uh, there's not a god, right? But you don't say, like, you don't provide an alternative. You just simply say, I don't believe in, in the theory. Like, what do you believe? Well, well, why is it my responsibility to provide an alternative? You're the because one suggesting. there suggest are answers. There you're, are you're, answers. But, there's but, no way that you, there's no way. Okay, okay but if you think, if you think that some prove, invisible magic man right. is the answer, you need to provide evidence for that. I'm not saying that there aren't answers to important questions. But if okay, you want, okay, if you okay, want okay, recourse to the yeah. supernatural okay, as your answers, happened? that's your job. I don't, I don't have to disprove anything. We will admit that science has not found every single answer that's out there. I, that that we know that. Okay, but, but we're working on it. Here's my question: hmm? How exactly are you going to prove, okay, that God doesn't exist when, okay, and you no, you're going to have to answer this one, okay? I, I'm going to well, answer it, but I'm going to let him. Just hold on. Now there are okay, like all three of you right now look very different. Okay, the people around us, our our entire like, uh, I guess being. Is, uh, is completely different, right? And, like, if you're going to go with the theory of evolution, like, how are you going to answer or check back the reasons that, like, our world exists? Like, even if there is an organism that created everything, wouldn't that still be a god? Well, I, I, if you want to broaden your definition of god to include any possible organism, maybe. You know, I mean, there are people out there who worship totem poles and call that, that, that their god. But, again, getting back to your question, it's not our job to prove that there isn't a god. Okay, I mean the the burden of proof for any claim then, lies okay, upon. Okay, then how do you how do you feel good about yourself? I feel. What do you mean? See, see, this no, is no, this is all you guys the have. Point is, the point John, is, listen. Here, here. This is you want to talk about naysaying. This is all you guys have. All that you have to come when somebody says, "Look, I, you want to tell me there's this invisible magic man that runs the universe, and I don't believe you because we don't have evidence." All you can say in response is make these ad hominem attacks. Say, "Oh, how can you feel good about yourself? You must be a bad guy." Blah 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 no, blah. No, I'm not and you don't want to learn guy. anything. No, no, no. It's not that you're not teaching anything. You don't want to learn anything. You don't want to listen about what what are we, you teaching me we the go in we go into a lot exist, yeah. so the fact that you believe in a have you have you read his website have you have you listened to this show for any length of time I, no, we present arguments I, I, we haven't present, read his, I haven't yeah. gone to his website yeah. but I've listened I mean to atheism show is atheism is a long-standing position and that's okay? why I'm calling in I'm just yeah. asking I'm trying to figure out like what you guys are saying well John yeah. I, I think you have some some really good questions and I, I'd like to address the one thing you said how do you feel good about yourself uh, let me give you an example. Um, when I was right. a Christian, if I did something good for someone, how I felt good about myself in my mind was I said, I felt that, well, I was obeying God. Uh, God says you should uh, um, help people. And therefore, I feel good about myself because I've obeyed God and I've, I've pleased God. And that's how I primarily consciously felt good about myself. Now, the difference is now when I help somebody, I help someone and it makes me feel good because I think it's the right thing to do because, uh, because I'm empathetic and I feel like I would feel good if somebody helped me like that. So I still feel good about myself, but the reasons are different. It's not because I'm 
feel good because I please God, but it's, yeah. I feel good because uh, of what I've Just, done and, and, and the satisfaction comes yeah. from different, a different yeah. place. Doing good things that, is a sense? reward in itself. No, yeah. yeah, I understand that. I mean, yeah. but that, I mean, what what turned you off to God? Just the fact that like one day you were like, I I I'm not, I don't have a vested any sort of vested interest in in like, or I I don't have any particular desire to be turned off, or anything like that. It's simply that I have not received uh, the reason I don't believe in God is that I haven't received any evidence that such a being exists. I don't believe in God for the same reason I don't believe in leprechauns. You know, so yeah. in terms of being turned off to it, what turns me off is are things like the authoritarianism of religion. Okay, that's the thing that turns me off. Okay, this whole I, idea I understand, of, like, like yeah. yeah, John Lennon says, imagine a world without religion, right? He doesn't say God, though. He says, you know, the fact that religions, and like the other guy was uh -huh. arguing, that different religious groups do impose types of beliefs that have created, you know, uh, some wrongs in society. I agree uh -huh. with that. And However, I have a problem my, with the idea of a God who would allow a religion that is supposed to represent his views to do that. But do you believe in any type of being? I mean, like, when you when you wake up in the morning and you, like, look into the clouds, right, and you're like, gee, why am I here? You don't you don't think... What's wrong oh, with saying, I just, I just don't know the answer to that question. That's what I say. I look right, at the clouds and I go, die, I don't okay, know. When, okay, my, my impression of an atheist is when he dies, his existence is gone. Like, there's no conscious stream or anything. There's no beam of energy, right? Like, mm -hmm. is that what you believe in? I'm afraid that when you die, you're dead. Yeah, that's... We have no evidence of any kind of, you know... Other than my physical body, there's some kind of spirit or soul or something like that that's going to leave, and so, yeah, it. And I don't, it would, I, don't I don't like that I that yeah. I'm going to die in you know 70 years or 60 years or whatever. But you know, hey, it's, it's so ultimately my response is I don't know. So yeah, I just don't. There's just not enough information to know the answer to that question, and I don't see anything wrong with saying, hey, I, I guess I'm going to have to find out when I get there because I just don't know the answer to that one. Okay, so you you're not a true atheist then. Yeah, well, an atheist is just someone who doesn't believe. Okay, I mean, you can lack you of knowledge of what's going to happen later yeah. on. Well, I mean, you can admit that you don't know an answer to a question, and yet still say, "But I don't believe this particular answer." And true you know, atheist, not... you can't just say atheist without defining atheist toward what. Jerry Falwell is a true atheist as much as I am when it comes to the Hindu gods, for example, or the Greek gods. He's a complete atheist there because he does not believe in them, and neither do I. So when you just say atheist like that without setting up any framework or definition of what you mean or what gods you're talking about, then your, your question really doesn't uh, have a meaning. You see what I'm saying? Well, well yeah. Well, my, my question was, like, when you die, what do you believe in? You're not sure, right? Right. But that, I don't think that has anything to do with if you're an atheist or the not. The other two gentlemen are sure that they're, like, not going to exist, that there's going to be, like, this big I don't think they're saying that. I think they're saying there's no evidence yeah. For certain we have, things, we have no reason to believe right. that there's something else. And I think so it would be without, awesome without some kind of evidence. If, if it I, were I otherwise, it, but... you know, I think I think the, the idea of an afterlife. Hey, I'm, what it's great. Evidence for you? Well, just anything that can, uh, you know, I I usually prefer the scientific method, which is that if you have a claim and the claim stands up to repeated testing, uh, it it can be verified independently through multiple sources, and it's not a. How do you test death? Test it for what? Yeah, like I mean, okay. but see, this is the oh, problem. Oh yeah, I died. I came back, and uh, well, see, that's really, the thing. There is though. an afterlife. That's the problem. So you can't say one way or the other. Then. Yeah. See, the thing is, no one's ever done that, right? So, what basis do one, does one have to believe that there is an afterlife? Because no one's really come back from the dead to, you know, claim that they, hey, I got ripped off by this religion that told me that I was going to, uh, you know, uh, if I crashed a plane into a building, I would that's get a, seventy-two virgins. That's a big part of religion. Is just teaching. Yeah. Is it's 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 quelling your fears. Mm -hmm. That yes, you're going to die. It's a it's a scary thing. I don't like the fact that I'm most likely going to die. Mm -hmm. um, and so religion gets a lot of mileage off that. Well, you're not really going to die. So. And the fact is that the religious person is really as in the dark about it as the as 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 I am. They may claim, okay, this is what my book says. These things are going to happen to me. But in reality, they don't know what's going to happen when they die any more than I do. So we're both in the same boat on that one, John. Yeah, it just all comes down to belief versus disbelief, you know. Um, right. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's cool. You guys can have that discussion, but it just doesn't seem like uh, very proper for you guys to just attack. Like, I, I saw, like, another show where, like, a Hindu guy called in and you just claimed that you you uh, you claim that there's not a God for all religions, right? But I, well, just, I, I think the entire, like, as you're claiming that there's an atheist experience in a community, mm -hmm. but... What exactly is it? It's just a group of people that are sitting around smoking cigarettes, having a cup of coffee, going, what's going to happen in the end? 
And wow. that's been a question that's been there forever, and even Christians. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, what's wrong with people who don't subscribe to religious views? Uh, you have a little group that they can meet other like-minded people. Why, why do you have a problem with that? Well, it, you're claiming that there's an experience behind it. It's not. Well, the, to it, man. well, you know, well, I actually, having actually since, there is. Because yeah, well, we're I, think that, one now. I think yeah, that being, I think that yeah. being atheists, we're a little <laughs> more qualified to a, talk about, you know, experience. what being an atheist is like than you are. Okay, all right. Dude, I mean, you, there's no set rules to being an atheist. I'm an atheist now. I don't believe in God. Well, if you, you know, there there are rules. You know, well, it's, it's see, being a human thing, on this earth. See, there the, are, the, see here, here's the deal, though. Being an atheist. That's just my question. Like I'm asking you. Like my first question when I came on was. All that you have to do to what be an atheist is not believe in any gods, you know? And above and beyond that, we have we know that there are atheist conservatives, atheist liberals, atheist vegetarians, and, you know, any other sort of philosophical stance that you want to take. Atheists uh, are, are defined, I mean, that term is specifically is defined by, you know, do you believe in any gods, any supernatural entities running the universe, any deities? We don't. Now, above and beyond that, we have all, as individuals, we have all kind of different beliefs. I think your and question regard, goes... We can, but, well, no, I mean, it's just, the, the, but the thing is, though, I mean, you know, you, you're, you're saying that we're making all these claims and this, that, and the other, but I'm listening to you, you know, uh, talking about how, you know, it, it, talking in such a way as to where you seem to think that you know more about what the experience of atheists is than we do, and I find that very arrogant, you know, and I find that I've that's just, very I've typical. Just never, I've just, I've never met anyone mm-hmm. who, who said that they were an atheist who's had an answer, it's just, all had an answer to what? I mean, you know. To the fact, like, like to, to what I mean, exactly? you know, just uh, you, I, I try to have, as, uh, if, well, if no. I have answers to questions, I'll give the answer. If I don't know the answer to a question, I'll say I don't know the answer to that. So what is you the know? fundamental question that you have that yeah, hasn't I'm, been answered? Yeah, what's the one question, then, that you want atheists to answer? If Well, I, I guess the, the main question just was, like, the actual purpose of the group. And it doesn't seem like there is... Well, we've told you that. It, we've told you that. It's the opportunity Education for... Education and outreach. It's the, it's the opportunity for unbelievers to meet other unbelievers, you know, because un- we as, as atheists live in a society predominantly populated by folks like you who are hostile to us just because we don't share your beliefs. And, and for my I part... For my, I don't think Well, I don't you, start, you're, 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 you were very hostile at the beginning of your call, and you mellowed out a bit, but the fact is, you know, you just... You, when you first started the you call, said, you could you not said, believe... What did Jesus do? You, 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 you could not believe, and you were extremely indignant and angry that we were even here on the air expressing opinions that didn't jive with your beliefs. No, but John, yeah, for my that, part, uh, it's, as it's far like, as... Um, it's, like, it's like, look, there's a big gay community in Austin, right? There's, mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if I said I hate all homosexuals, that would be very offensive to a group of people. Now, when you say Jesus did not do jack... You're offending a large amount of people that could possibly be seeing that, man. And well, I'm we saying, understand that, just, so, you know. But I we mean, don't but say that exactly. without backing it up, though. No, mm-hmm. that's the thing. You don't back it up. You just say, hey, man, I don't believe in it. Okay, well, okay. That okay. Takes, that takes All right. Okay, skill. that's a very valid point. At this time, we made that statement, and we didn't really qualify no, with it. No, I totally qualified but, it, uh, and I'll qualify, no, it again. I'll, I'll qualify it again for those who missed it, <laughs> okay? Okay, if you want to talk about someone making a sacrifice, it's a sacrifice when you die and you stay dead. It's not really much of a sacrifice, I don't think, if you die for three days and then you get to come back to life and become ruler of the universe. What sort of sacrifice is that? I mean, it seems to me that's a sacrifice anybody would be glad to make. I'd do it. You know, big deal. And and didn't you work out mathematically something to the effect that if uh, the population, if Jesus died for everyone's sins, and given today the world's population today... So the, that works out to Jesus being dead for approximately what, like zero suffering. Po- it was point zero 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 four three seconds per, per person. person per day. I'll, I'll there, will and take responsibility. There's for my there's statements. people at Brackenridge who so. flatline for longer than that. Okay, I mean, should I be worshiping them? <laughs> so it's just okay. It's, yeah, we do think that there are, are a lot of areas of this belief system that are are. <laughs> deeply deserving of criticism, and are in fact absurd. And sometimes, you know, I mean, if we express our position on that passionately, well, you know, welcome to the world of debating these things, you know? And but when, when, we're happy to have guys like you call us up. we got to take our next caller, though, but oh, call us up oh, any time again. If you think there's a question we can't answer, we'll be happy to tackle it, all right? Take care. All right. Okay, okay. and like, I'd like to just make one comment to John, is that you know, he's asking you, well, what, what's, what's this group about? I mean, what's your purpose if, you know, mm-hmm. you're sitting around disbelieving something? Well, for my part, you know, Something like this is sort of like an Alcoholics Anonymous, too. If you're uh, a recovering, you know, from, from religion. And, you know, so I guess based on, on your reasoning, John, you would say, well, Alcoholics Anonymous has no purpose because all they're doing is stopping drinking. And then what do you do? Yeah. You know, so what's the purpose of that? Well, you know, there's a lot of purpose in that because yeah. you're, 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 um, 
you're getting out of something that, that had a strong hold on your life and staying away from it uh, and not falling back into that is a constant struggle. So with religion, uh, it's a similar thing, getting out of something like that, recovering from that, mm -hmm. and, and not falling back into, you know, some people may be tempted to, to go back into the, under the security blanket of knowing that God's going to take care of everything, and, mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about it, and that's, that's really uh, attractive to some people. And so, so it's, it's like that. It's, it's, there's a lot of purpose in recovering, and then being able to move on and finding uh, a real purpose in your life after you leave something like that. Yeah. And also, we don't typically just sit around and say, ain't it sweet? that there's no God and you know that that's kind of the end of it and then you take us up your coffee um, like, like I say it's it's primarily a social group among us uh, yeah. like I say we get together and play board games on gamers night and we go you know mm -hmm. have a beer at happy hour it's it's just good and nice group. heated arguments on our mailing list exactly yeah. well yeah um, <laughs> You know, there's, nice flame wars on yeah. email. <laughs> I think this experience is really, you know, the, the, it's it's no different than any other sort of life experience, and that except in that you are not living your life with reference to the supernatural. That's the atheist experience. And we can make jokes and, that are funny yeah. to everybody else. Yeah, but you know, but yeah, you know, and but in terms of like, you know, our, we're, we're not just here to offend people, but you know, okay. You're now forewarned. If you're a very devout Christian and you tune into an atheist show, you may hear things that offend you. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. You know, we do we do criticize religion here, uh, and we hear uh, nasty stuff when we tune. We into don't do the it Christian to hurt. Shows. Yeah, so. yeah. I, compared to some of the things I've heard on yeah. Christian shows, we're not yeah. saying you're going to burn forever in hell and yeah, and all and these I, awful things are going to happen to you. You suck. Know. Yeah, and because uh, you don't believe in God, and you're you a horrible sinner. You're going to die. You're know. going to burn for all eternity. But we respect guys like John for calling us up, and we appreciate hearing you know, and and appreciate hearing from you. And, and call us up again anytime. I mean, that's why we're here to let you know John, people like John who don't have a lot of experience confronting atheists to to do it and to think about what he believes. All right, Donald is on three and he's been waiting very patiently. Hey, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey. Thanks for holding. Oh, yeah, because you had two long callers. Okay. <laughs> Sorry okay, about that. Um, can you explain to me the true atheist position? Because I'm kind of confused. Okay, atheists are people who do not believe in any gods. Okay, and my second question is, um, how do you, um, okay, can you explain to me the how the universe came into being? No, I cannot. Okay. Oh, and, you know, see, um, as being African-American, you know, mm -hmm. Africans have always had a strong belief in the one God. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, it's called monotheism. And, you know... I can respect your position, but, you know, there is one God, and you have to give me some um, proof on your position. Well, I don't know that I have to give you proof of anything. All I'm saying is that I don't believe that there are any gods. Now, I don't believe in, you know, I, it, here, let, me, let me make an analogy to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, d uh, I, can't, uh, I can't prove, okay, that the planet Neptune is not inhabited by flying purple telepathic bunny rabbits. True. Okay? True. True. Now, because I can't prove it, does that make it rational to believe that there are? You, you know... I mean, do, do, does that mean that rational people, because, because, of, because a claim can't be disproved, it, there, rational people have an obligation to believe it, no matter how bizarre or strange it may seem? And flip See, it around, Donald, too. Yeah. Okay. Think, think of something you don't believe in. For example... Maybe you don't believe in, in, in the Greek gods, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? You don't believe in Zeus. Now, do you have to prove that Zeus doesn't exist for you to be able to say that you don't believe in him? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, from, um, you know, from my basic standpoint, it's like this coming from a, you know, a semi-religious mm -hmm. background, you know, how can you explain how you got on this planet? How can you three explain how I came into being? Yeah. We don't know all the details of that. That's that's fields of science for cosmology on how the planet got here right. and biology and any biogenesis stuff like that. We don't have every single answer, okay. but we do have some pretty good ideas on how things came to be, how the planet got here, how the moon formed, how life began, and how we got from you know the first little microbes and all that kind of small stuff right. to where we are today. We have pretty good ideas on how all that happened, and we have a lot of evidence to back that up. So while we don't have a complete picture, we're ninety percent there, basically, or whatever. And so but. we have we have hard evidence backing up what we think is right. Mm -hmm. Religion is just saying, well, that's all wrong. 
God put us here, that's the end of it. Yes, and there's nothing to back that up. Yeah. From our standpoint, you know, God is bigger than religion. You know, um, um, religion is man-made. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and the point I'm trying to get across, probably like the last call, what is your goal? Is your goal to try to make... Um, Austin, all atheists will try to just get your um, I thought, try I, to get your viewpoint out there. Make people I, yeah. think. I thought we, I thought we explained that, but we'll do it again. I mean, it's it's we're here to express on the television show. We're here to express our viewpoint. Okay. As well as to uh, yeah, and, and to debate with debate with people who disagree with us. Okay. And the purpose of the organization is just to give uh, you know unbelievers a little a little group that they can meet with and just do stuff, go out to eat, oh, uh, be God. social, go see movies, do whatever. Oh, okay. Because a lot of unbelievers, you know, are scared to say they're unbelievers, and it's very refreshing for people to meet other folks who uh, you know think like them and that they can feel comfortable around. A lot of unbelievers lead a very uncomfortable life in our culture because you feel like you can't talk about it. That people will go, oh, I can't, you know, and, and, you know, people have lost, and to the, if people have talked about, you know, losing friends and, and becoming alienated from family members simply because they say, well, I don't believe those things. And so it's very difficult. Oh, okay. And we're yeah. mostly not here to convert anybody, you know. You yeah. realize that you're not going to, we're, we're not going to change your ideas. You're not going to change ours most likely. Okay. And so we're here mostly just to, well, to let you know what our ideas are. Are, okay. And so that you can get, you know, you can learn what atheism is about from atheists rather than from your preacher, who's right. probably not got the best idea of it. All right, man, that's cool. Yeah. All but, right, uh, but hey, call us up anytime, all right? All right. Hey, thanks a lot. All right, all right. Thanks, Donald. Yeah, and you know, I'm willing to have my views changed by anybody who presents me with sound, solid evidence, just like James Randi. Yes. James Randi, who has his million dollar prize for anybody who just proves in, you know, in control of experimental like supernatural positions, event. supernatural events. Like, I'll become a Christian tomorrow if somebody just gives me the solid evidence, you know, that, uh, you know, that this is a, a yeah. valid belief system and that its claims, all of its supernatural claims can be confirmed. Uh, you know, uh, I don't have a problem with accepting things that are well supported by evidence. Um, we'll, we'll take on uh, something else to say, but I had, um, <laughs> but it just went away. Yeah, you, and, you probably made the point anyway. And one thing, you know, I, I remember uh, a quote I really yeah. like uh, from a minister that, that, that when I was talking to early on when I was losing my religion. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he said that uh, he was a liberal minister, and he, he said that uh, there's a quote from a, a Presbyterian minister at a meeting of, of Presbyterian pastors, I guess, when they were debating some theological issue. And he said, you know, he said, I beseech you, brethren, to consider the possibility that you might be wrong. And that sort of is the purpose of, of my website, and I, and I think a lot uh, to, of you guys too, is not, okay, we're not trying to convert you to this, but hey, just consider the possibility that you know there may be something mm-hmm. else you haven't considered. And not only, and that goes both ways, because there's certain things, certainly things we haven't considered either. And so if, if the only result of this program is that you think about something, uh, and we think about something, then I think that's a really, a really good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've often said that the point of the show is not to convert anyone or anything. It's just, like you said, to make you think. If yeah. somebody walks away from this just thinking about their ideas, even if they walk away and they're a more devout Christian than they yeah. were yesterday because mm-hmm. of talking to us, I'm fine with that. Well, they thought about their... I, they, I kind of be sad to think that someone talked to me and became an even more... <laughs> but, uh, you know, True, but, but if they, but if they, they came they, to it they, rationally, they gave, this, this, they, gave their, they gave their beliefs serious thought, right. yeah, the a critical is an exchange idea, of and ideas. they came away from yeah, that. The important thing That's is, a good thing. And right. The important thing is to have an exchange of ideas. To think honestly. And, yeah, yes. it, precisely. And, the, and what? The Christians have, what, f- half a dozen or so 24-hour-a-day full-time cable networks yeah. devoted to getting their message out. You know, we have 90 minutes a week to get ours out. Gee, I think that's, you know, this is the other side. Hardly, you know, hardly uh, unreasonable for us. Um, But yeah, um, another point that that, here's what I was going to say. Another question that um, was raised in that Skeptic uh, Magazine email uh, from one of the Christian ministers who wrote and said, he said, I challenge skeptics to do two things. He says, uh, first off, you know, take sci- you know, view scientific claims as skeptically as you view religious claims, and you know, and by the, while at the, by the same token, give uh, spiritual claims. He he didn't use religious spiritual claims. He said, and also give spiritual claims the same healthy consideration that you give scientific claims. And I answered him in in uh, two particulars. I said, well, first off, that whole skeptical process that you want us to have is built into the scientific method itself. Okay, so, I mean, the scientific method has this self-correcting procedure, this system of checks and balances. 
you know, peer review. You know, I mean, you, you've, a, a responsible scientist, if he has a big, you know, bold theory, he's going to present it for peer review. Other scientists will check him out. There will be debate, discussion. And so there is a system of checks and balances so that it, science is not just guys saying, Eureka, and, and I have this, and, and everyone believes him. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so right off the bat, he doesn't need to worry. You know, there's no need for, us, for him to worry about skeptics not being skeptical of scientific claims because we are. I mean, that's, it's built in. But by the same token, in terms of taking spiritual claims as seriously as scientific claims and sort of giving them a level playing field there, the problem is that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Okay. And so if, you're, if someone is going to make a spiritual claim like of some miraculous event, and, and, and this is something that this claim appears to fly in the face of everything that hundreds of years of physics has taught us about you know, how the universe works and how stuff happens... Well, then that person making that claim has got an added burden of proof. He not only has to prove his claim, but he has to prove that like an entire well-established scientific field is wrong about a particular thing. And that's not to say he can't do it in principle. That quantum physics is learning a whole, is, is changing around a whole lot of ideas about what we know from traditional physics. But um, that's not to say he can't do it in principle. But, you know, again, be, be aware that if you're going to, spiritual claims can't really be just automatically given the same level playing field that naturalistic claims that science commonly deals with can. And what level does, of credence do Christians give other religions spiritual claims? Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a you know, good point you keep bringing up. It's sort of like, you know, look at the, you know, you don't believe in the gods of other religions. You don't take their claims seriously. And the, the only difference really between our atheism and the atheism of a guy named John and Donald is one God, really. Well, I mean, it's the factor of one God. <laughs> you know? So anyway, Arlo, our, our, and I assume it's our very own Arlo, is on two? No? He's on line two. That's Arlo. Someone oh, someone else is on line two. Sorry, Arlo, I mean, I'm being told to make you wait. So just be a good boy and wait, <laughs> my good man, while I t- we'll take line two. And... Hey, you're on the air. Hi, how are you? Uh, we are well. How are you? I know you you don't have that much time left. I just wanted to make a comment yes. to um, what Mr. Wang said earlier about recovering from religion. I am recovering from religion. Hmm. I'm still a believer. I believe in the Creator, and I believe that the Creator is an energy that is, you know, dealing with us. However, I try to stay as far as I can away from religion because I believe that religion teaches separatism, um, racism. Um, Religion is uh, the reason why the world is all screwed up today because of religion. And I'm sick and tired of people, especially um, Christians, who say that... uh, this real this came from God. This came from God. I know this came from God, and you God know, and spoke try to, to enforce yeah. um, what they think came from God, whether it was some kind of hallucination or you know them hearing voices or whatever. Mm-hmm. Just you know trying to um, force the rest of us to to believe what they think should be some kind of moral code. I think that we all should treat each other the way that we want to be treated. Mm-hmm. And God is bigger than religion, and we should, um, you know, just respect one another. But at the same time, I mean, I'm like trying to stay as far as I can away from religion, especially people who like to convert you. Yeah. There, mm-hmm. That is a big problem for me. Yeah. Let me come to you if I want to come to you. And like you said earlier, all the access channels are filled with all these different denominations of people from who all say that they believe in the same God, yet they cannot sit in church together and get along with one another because they see God from a different perspective. Well, you know what? I believe in the Creator, and it's one Creator, and, and that's what I believe. But um, I am truly trying to recover from those religious fanatics. Thank you. Well, Thank congratulations, you. Colin, for, for doing that. It's not easy thinking your way out of that box. And, uh, yeah. I know how tough that is. So Yeah. You know. 
Well, but you keep know, on, well, keep on going. You know, she she mentioned about you know, people trying to convert you. That's the rise on the tray of religion. I mean, that it's yeah. it's to perpe- it's this organization, it's part of the religion, this structure mm-hmm. that is to perpetuate itself. I mean, go forth out into all the world, and you know, yeah. and it's like they do they, unto everybody. It's, 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 it's the yeah. mission. Help to God. Uh, and yeah. I remember my church experience. Right, when I was a teenager, or adolescent, really. Um, you know, that's the whole. We were constantly hammered with the whole idea of getting out there and being witnesses, and, witnessing to people. Yes, and that was that was yeah. a very big. Uh, and I'll tell you what. To them. Here's one tell thing them. that that really just kind of this this was probably the straw that broke the back for me uh, was that um, I was I was attending some you know little youth seminar dealy that they had there, and they had this one you know traveling youth minister guy who would I guess go around the country and do stuff, and. Um, he wanted to have uh, you know, all the youth groups from this church go out to this mall and proselytize, and that the, just the very concept of that was such a turnoff to me. <laughs> now, even at that time, when I still, you know, I wasn't an unbeliever yet, but but I was still being turned off to mm-hmm. just the whole pattern of behavior that religion mm-hmm. is is like. Get, let's get out there and be in oh, everyone's God, it's, face. It's, it's painful. Believe me, mine is painful. I, oh, I, used to live, I grew up in South Dakota, and we were passing out uh, Bibles that? at Mount Rushmore. Oh. We were passing out the, the just the Gospels. Yeah. And these little blue books. Mm-hmm. We we're standing, and passing them out, and everybody thought we were moonies because we had these little <laughs> books. And we're, no, we're not moonies. We're Christians. Like, Please uh-huh. take this. And, and that was one of the most painful experiences of my life. So you're, yeah. you're, you're and then walking by a near, and, and well seeing how many of them were in a nearby trash cans when you. Well, that's another story. Yeah. So many people were throwing them away that we were wanting to take them out of the trash cans. Yeah. And the park ranger came over and said, "Well, you know, you shouldn't do that because that's unsanitary. So no, you can't. You, you got to leave them in the trash. <laughs> you, can. you can't win. You can't bring them out. Uh, yeah. Them, think of the view. Them Somebody again. walks along. Here's yeah. here's some kids Rush digging more. stuff out of the trash and then handing it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, we put them in the bottom of the box. We weren't directly <laughs> handed back. Here, take some from the trash. <laughs> Scrape the pizza rind off of it. Yeah, that's sort of like. Oh, uh, well, poor Arlo. So. Hey, Arlo. Hey, guys. Hey, How so- are you doing? Thanks. Sorry yeah, I keep you waiting there. But, that's all right. Uh, Sorry I didn't make it down there. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. That, like, hey, we'll chastise you later. That sounds like really good news that we'll have lectures at the History Center. No, I haven't been there, but that sounds a lot better than telling people, oh, I'm going to have a lecture. Oh, where's it going to be? In a cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> But I want like food, darn it, while I'm listening to yeah. you <laughs> and people. Yeah. The History Center, that, that sounds good. And I'm looking yeah. forward to that. I do want to take a look yeah. in February. And, um, and I was going to talk about something else, but then all these calls got me revved up. I just want to say, religious people don't know what they're missing. With atheism, it is so liberating to live your life separate from God, to make decisions by your rational faculty, not being programmed by someone or something else. Mm-hmm. It's just so liberating. They. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, Amen. Ha- having, ha- <laughs> yeah, having, uh, I mean, they are the religious people are faking reality to deal through life that is bearable, but they would never know it. They're living in a fantasy land, and uh, you know, whoever can come up with the best fantasy, and let's hope we don't destroy ourselves in the process. It's just mm-hmm. walking a fine line. Yeah. Yeah. There's, oh, but just the whole idea that your 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 uh, main motivation in life is the plea is to please some divine being. Oh, please, Mr. Divine Being, don't burn me for all eternity in hell for being a bad person. And that's I'll do my. And, and, it just, and, it's, and it's not just when you're not a Christian when they hit you with that message. I've listened to Christian television where he's got a congregation full of people and the, the minister is telling them that, well, so you think you're saved, huh? Well, he's just, you gotta better be on your toes 24 hours a day. Cause, Y'all still suck. Yeah, one little slip up and you could burn. And it's just this constant reinforcement of be afraid of the authority figure. Be afraid of the authority figure. And that's one thing that you don't have when you're atheist is this whole idea that the decisions you make are based upon practical concerns you know you're 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 worried about what the people whose lives you're actually going to affect might think of what you do and you're not worried about some all-powerful voyeur on high peeking into your life 24 hours a day and threatening to smite you the consequences of of being atheist and being rational is living a good life that's very rewarding and i don't like it that people call in and try to say that oh you have no experience because you don't have a religious experience if it's not a supernatural experience somehow it's just not experience like the caller said himself he said oh you just get around and have conversations that's not an experience what are you talking about of course that is (laughs) yeah it's a very important Important part of life, communicating yeah. with other human beings. Yeah, and um, and 
Well, and this idea that we're, we all smoke, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I think almost what, none of us smoke. Maybe like 20%, 20 of our group. But again, this is, a, this is what a lot of religious people do. I mean, when confronted <laughs> with unbelievers, they're so freaked out and upset and indignant about it that they just they have to slam you personally. They can't really, you know... You know, persuade you with facts or evidence or figures. You know, they have they have to think there's. You know, again, it's this. You're a bad guy if you don't share my beliefs. That's the point of view. Anyway, hey, thanks, Arlo, for uh, for calling up. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, see you. Okay. Bye. Uh, we're flat out of time, but do uh, you have any uh, quick closing remarks in a few well, seconds? As a former Christian, hey, the experience isn't always all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's uh, freeing that shackle is uh, is very liberating, as Arlo said. We well, appreciate Emery coming by the sure, show. Great to have you. Very eloquent speaker. Visit his site, listen, losingmyreligion.com. Theus, we don't hate you. We just.